Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday morning, 1030 a.m. That's California time here. February 19th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.1 there across the India area right there in the red flag. Also some movement. That looks like a 4.3 earthquake coming into the uh, well, just south of the Philippines there. Starting off with the uh, Santorini area. This is the uh, network stations around here. Just going to give a quick little view of the current seismic activity there. This is the last few hours or so. Still quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up here in this region. Uh, as far as any larger earthquake activity, I believe we had at least one four-pointer here in the mix of earthquakes. Let's go ahead and zoom in real quick and show you guys. This is the last 24 hours of earthquake activity around the Santorini region. I'm just refreshing this, make sure I got the latest data. Here's all the magnitudes of quakes over here. Uh, 3.8, 4.2, 3.8 appear to be some of the larger quakes here in the last 24 hours. A slight slowdown, but as you can see on the map here, still getting some broader uh, earthquake activity around the region. A little bit of migration southward here in the last 24 hours as well uh, from the uh, ongoing earthquake activity. Here's the last 48 hours and uh, last 20 days or so. Going to have a, a significant amount of earthquakes up here. Uh, in fact, it's slowing everything down on the map. But uh, let's go ahead and back out here just a little bit. Again, most of the clustering going on across this area northeast of the Santorini region. Uh, but it's nothing has changed yet in terms of uh, any volcanic activity. Just a watch and wait scenario to see what happens. Uh, same for this area, or same for this map. This is the uh, a different view from the RaspberryShake.org website. It has a, a number of uh, webby quarters across the planet. This one here is very close to the uh, Santorini area. Um, maybe a couple smaller spikes showing up on that right now. Earthquake activity, at least the last one recorded, appears to be a 2.9 earthquake down south here. About uh, That one's pretty deep, though, 116 kilometers deep. Uh, aside from that, just general earthquake activity that we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks here. Just been the uh, common, the common uh, activity. No, um, nothing new to report here. Just continual earthquake activity, occasional southward migration. Periodically, we get these larger quakes in the uh, four and five range as well. But uh, right now, like I say, right now things look uh, um, typical. It's crazy to say that it's been typical like this for the last couple of weeks with no uh, clear sign or indicator of any main type of event. But we'll continue to watch that around the Santorini area. As far as the Campe Flegre region of Italy, we'll go ahead and zoom in real quick to that area. Uh, not a whole lot of act, not a whole lot of activity here in the last 24 hours. Going to have to excuse my voice here because I'm still a little under the weather. It's getting better. Uh, just a handful of earthquakes here in the smaller range. Over the last uh, week or so, there's been a number of earthquakes out there in the Campe uh, Flegre volcanic fields there, but uh, nothing has changed there across that area um, as far as any escalation goes. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Volcano Discovery website. Really nothing new to report on the volcanoes there I just mentioned. A couple volcanoes there uh, in the eruption stage, but as far as the uh, Santorini area goes or the Campi Flegre region, well, that's uh, some older news here on the map. Quite a few volcanoes out there in the eruption stage, but, uh, you know, that's, that can happen on any given day out here. It's been somewhat elevated, right? Got a number of volcanoes out there on the map that are in erup, uh, eruption stage across the Middle America Trench. Kilauea Volcano off and on. And, um, yeah, we'll just continue to watch it on those, uh, those two areas of interest that I try to cover. Uh, earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and start off here for the West Coast, uh, up into the Pacific Northwest. Relatively quiet, not a whole lot going on through Washington or Oregon. One earthquake up here, 
Very shallow crustal quake, southern Oregon. This is a interesting event, a 2.9, just shy. Well, it's inland here at the surface level where we expect uh, to see surface quakes following amplified pressure out here along the Cascadia subduction zone, which uh, has been happening a lot out here. 2.9, again, negative 0 0.4, indicating a very shallow uh, earthquake there across that region. The trimmer map has actually been quite elevated out here as well. If we look at the trimmer here in the last, uh, we'll pull up the last week. Uh, a lot of trimmer down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, where we're seeing, where we have, where we have been seeing the um, earthquake activity here off northern California coast, um, and also some movement there today in the Oregon region. That's a uh, uh, it was about eight o'clock this morning local time here for 2.9 so lots going a lot of stuff is going on here when you get uh, elevated trimmer activity underneath this area uh, you back build strain along the cascadia subduction zone and in this case it's been hitting the southern end uh, more so than the entirety of the cascadia a little bit up north here into washington over the last couple days and uh, a little bit of elevated earthquake activity over there as well. Uh, we have to go back the last seven days, though, to see some of the adjustment that's going on. So when you when you put the plate, when you put the Juan de Fuca plate here, you try to, sh when it's shoving underneath this area, so to speak, it's a subduction zone, uh, a lot can take place here at the surface and the deeper levels. You get these surface fractures and just an overall pattern of uh, increasing seismic activity like we've seen across the Cascades and more recently a couple of threes up here. Uh, indicative there of the uh, strain building up uh, due to the Cascadia subduction zone. It's been uh, a little bit more noticeable down south here with the elevated earthquake activity um, due to the tremor uh, that's occurring downstream. The tremor activity is not at the surface level, but down there about 35, 45 kilometers into the subduction zone underneath this area. And when that takes place, well, the, the back building strain upstream here, and that's when we can see the larger earthquakes take place. But for now, just a couple smaller ones there uh, in Northern California and the surface fracture there in Oregon, but we'll continue to watch it. Uh, 325 years has passed since the uh, 9.0 earthquake there across the Cascadia. Uh, but don't forget, we can see partial ruptures here of the southern end uh, resulting into uh, an 8.4 earthquake and that's where I'm been looking at. I, I'm thinking we're more than likely to see a, a partial rupture than a full rupture, which takes a little bit longer uh, than 325 years. Uh, so we, we definitely keep an eye here on the southern end of the Cascadia with this recent activity. Um, Chester area underneath Lake Almanor, a little 1.6. San Francisco Bay region, fairly quiet aside from a couple smaller quakes out here today. Really nothing of any abnormal activity. This is a Clear Lake volcanic field, a lot of geothermal operations up there uh, with those earthquakes. As far as Southern California goes, uh, I'll just go ahead and check out 2.5 map and above. Uh, both of these earthquakes here from yesterday, 2.9 in Nevada, and uh, also 2.8 there across the Garlock Fault shear zone. Actually quite a bit of activity here on the uh, shear zone area was expecting that because it's been pretty quiet here uh, but all the activity along the San Andreas fault here should put the strain up there which is what it's doing eventually that uh, you know this plate boundary here will be no longer be able to withstand the strain and pressure that's been building up here for well, over 300 years so it's uh, there's a big one coming but who knows when folks we don't know exactly when but a lot of signs here recently of uh, elevated earthquake activity. One earthquake here, the most recent one, it looks like on the San Andreas Fault, 1.8. Uh, if I remember right, this is a region that, uh, well, it looks like it's north of there, actually. Had a swarm of earthquakes here on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault with a number of three-pointers as well. Quite a few threes in that cluster on the San Andreas Fault. Um, now, within the last 24 hours, a little bit of adjustment further north here with these two quakes, but still on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. So we got to watch that, folks. It's definitely uh, 
under quite a bit of strain there in Southern California. Uh, the rest of Los Angeles area, just a couple smaller earthquakes out there, but keep an eye on the plate boundary there. It's overdue, and uh, when it goes, it's going to go with an 8.1 earthquake there across Southern California. Uh, let's see, Yellowstone National Park, a little bit of earthquake activity leading up here across the mountain ranges of uh, Utah, up into Idaho, but really nothing big. Uh, just a lot of small microquake activity up here, which is very common. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here on the map, but I do want to double check that. Um, the data has been offline for a couple days. It looks like it's finally come back up. Whatever the reason is, who knows, just um, periodically maybe they go down for maintenance or some type of network I issue. But um, not a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up here at all. Pretty quiet. Maybe a couple spikes there on the borehole station, but uh, aside from that, Yellowstone National Park continues to sleep. There across Texas, some oil-filled um, earthquakes. Nothing else going on there across the uh, rest of the country. As far as the uh, last 24 hours of earthquake activity, largest is going to be a 5.7 from yesterday into the Indonesia Islands area. But uh, today, after midnight, it's going to be a 4.8 down here, uh, roughly in the same area. Pretty deep, though, 169 miles deep for that earthquake. Nothing major going on there across New Zealand. A couple threes here and there, but uh, no major adjustment to speak of. Definitely a big-time swarming, though, yesterday, late last night, uh, into this area of Papua New Guinea. No big quake activity, just a couple fives stirring up out there. But this deeper activity is still happening following the surface adjustment, so... I still think we may see some larger activity within this region soon. The Japan area, one super deep earthquake on the southern end of the Nankai Trough. Look at that, 3.6, 140 kilometers deep there. Again, southern end of the Nankai Trough. Got to watch that area. It's under quite a bit of strain here recently. Coming up on the regular intervals of large earthquakes uh, for that area as well. Uh, Alaska, a couple smaller quakes up there. Let's go ahead and check this out, see what we got going on. Uh, actually, quite active, it looks like. 4.6 from last night. A couple other smaller quakes stretching up towards the Fairbanks area. Nothing big around Anchorage, just a uh, typical earthquake pattern up there due to the major subduction zone here along the Aleutian Trench. Uh, Kilauea Volcano, let's go check that out real quick, see what we have for the latest data. Should be getting close to an eruption if we haven't already. Check this out real quick. I don't see anything going on there across the uh, summit cams. Still smoldering and smoking. Volcanic gas is there. It does that even when it's not in eruption stage. As uh, far as the latest update here, this was put out uh, yesterday morning, so no new update, which means uh, more than likely that we haven't had a uh, an eruption yet again. But we are coming up on the uh, maximum inflation level for episode 10, which should, it should start at any time now. Let's check out the deformation data. Still going up. This is the uh, inflation chart here. If you look at the last month, each inflation leading up to a drop, which is the eruption. And uh, it just it continues, rinse and repeat. Although it looks like each duration here or each uh, episode of a pause, <clears throat> excuse me, lasts a little bit longer than the one before. Uh, but if you notice here in our last pause, which started on the 12th, here we are uh, nine days or seven days later, we... Uh, should be seeing a return to the eruption stage at Kilauea Volcano very, very soon. I wouldn't doubt it if it starts here sometime in the afternoon. A couple earthquakes out there as well, but really nothing major going on. All right, uh, let's check out space weather. See if there's anything cool going on on the sun. A little bit of uh, aurora activity from last night. KP index up around the G1 category. Things have since mellowed out. Not a whole lot there in the forecast as far as uh, any extended potential there for the auroras. 
Not a whole lot of flaring going on either. Pretty quiet out there. Quick glance at the magnetogram image of the sun and the sunspots. Well, uh, not a whole lot. A lot of disorganized sunspots out here and really nothing of any complexity in terms of magnetically speaking. Uh, flare threat, they still have a 10%, but I'm forecasting a 1% or less. I don't see any chances of X flare at all. M flare at 40. C flare, 99% chance. Actually, it looks like we're dipping below the C flare category into the B flare category. Call that the boring category. Goodness. Yeah, B 9.5. So, you know, the sun goes through these little stages here. Um, right now, we're entering into a little quiet period. So we'll just watch it and see what uh, plays out. As far as any close approach asteroids in the near term, looks like 2024 YR4, the asteroid that uh, could hit Earth in 2032, is having its uh, chances of hitting us go up. Seems like it happens each week here that uh, we're seeing a higher possibility of that city destroyer uh, hitting us in 2032. And we'll have to cover that as we get uh, some more data. Uh, 187 miles, 187,000 miles for a 13 foot car size asteroid there uh, here in a couple days. But relatively uh, speaking, these are all safe. In terms of distance one that's coming in uh, 2032 could be up around 300 feet maximum uh, in diameter so that's a big one even if it's half of that size it's still uh, a decent size asteroid there all right uh, storm prediction center as far as severe weather goes not a whole lot there in the forecast pretty quiet guess that's good news a lot of cold air out there across the rest of the country here east of the rockies put that in motion here and uh see what we got pacific northwest getting in on some uh, more moisture and some snow california wish wish we could say we're getting uh, some more rain but i don't see it i'm not seeing anything in the long-term model still a lot of cold air dipping down here as we enter into march across this area of the country with a uh, well below normal uh, temperature is expected here while we're above normal out here along the west coast it, it's always a pattern when we're cold out here across the west coast we get ridging out here and they, they warm up but uh, when it's this type of setup it uh, can stay it can stay like that for a while i don't see any major change there for california a lot of cold air across the uh, east all right folks i'm out of here a couple smaller spikes there on China Lake Station. That's uh, down around the Ridgecrest area of Southern California. Aside from that, quick glance at the uh, Santorini seismogram viewer here. Pretty quiet. Not seen a whole lot of uh, spikes there on that station. Let me double check the 4D station here. That almost looks like continuous activity. Kind of like a rumbling or harmonic trimmer. But I don't see it. If, well, some of these lines are a little bit thicker, but it's hard to say if that's indeed harmonic trimmer, or maybe some type of wind out there. But earthquake activity obviously still continuing. No change to that. It has, it has let off a little bit. Uh, but last time we've seen something like this, we started to see some more fives and then that flood movement that uh, showed up on the web recorder. So we'll continue to watch this and report back on any change that takes place. Hope everyone has a good day. Keep an eye there on the uh, San Andreas Fault. And we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening. I didn't get a chance to do an update la last night. Uh, voice has been crackling like crazy. Um... So I was just trying to give my voice a little break, but uh, we'll be back out here tonight for sure uh, with the um, Wednesday night update. Have a good one, folks, and stay safe out there.